We acknowledge the traditional custodians of this country of Canberra, the Ngunnawal people on Ngabri land. We also acknowledge the Tongan High Commissioner here in Canberra, Her Royal Highness Princess Latu Fuipeka Tukwaho. We welcome all of you today to this program of the series of um, public, lecture. public lectures, mm. Loao Public Lecture. And um, of course, the, this is the first one in English. Yeah. Mm. and it's already been done in the Tongan language. Yeah. I, uh, I'll i just leave it to Professor Susiwa Laftani, who is here with me, to tell you the topics. Fata, the essence of Tongan arts, me'atu faiva, um, material arts. Yeah. That is the topic today. I'm sorry. And <coughs> as I did say to you, this is the first public lecture in English. This has already been done in Tongan. Yeah. So this is part one of material arts. Fata, the essence of Tongan arts. Mm. Me'atu Fiber. Thank you. Thank you, Luciane. And uh, before we, because I'm going to run this uh, by uh, PowerPoint, but thank you for, for the introduction. It is the first time for us to do this uh, be serious um, and for you to interview uh, my thoughts and what I was talking about in this public, first public lecture in the Tongan language. So as Luciana said, so we will try our best to, to present to you uh, from Luciana's side and from my side. She's going to ask a few questions and I will try to answer as we go through the the PowerPoint, but um, before we we continue on to to the PowerPoint section uh, part, uh, I just like to to share with our audience the the some of the terms their their meanings before we continue on. Uh, fata fata uh, is is a concept in Tonga is about square. And it's about uh, when four people, to be uh, simple, uh, to be in simple terms, when four people carry a person of high in rank, a chief or a king, uh, the, 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 the FATA concept uh, comes out from that, um, from the caring of the chief or the king by uh, it can be four people or more. So the four people with the four corners form the square that we call Fata, and we have Fata in Kalia, double hall canoe. We have Fata in the in the house in the Falitonga, and, uh, and and in few other um, parts of our material arts, but. Uh, but but my 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 public lecture here is is a view or a claim that fata is the essence of Tongan art. We can see fata throughout Tongan arts, not only in material arts, but also in performing art in Faiba and also in uh, fine arts, Nima Mea. Here is the Tongan Mea do Faiba is the is the Tongan a uh, word that we come up with, Luciane, that's the um, uh, Tongan word, it's, it's a Tongan word for art. Because in, in Tongan culture, there is no Tongan word for art itself or for art. We have a uh, word for for material arts, tufunga, uh, faiva for performing arts, performing arts, faiva and then fine art, nima mea. But we don't have the word art itself. So this is the word which we come up with and we decided this is the, Luciana suggest, suggested that this is the, uh, the, the appropriate and better Tongan word uh, in, our, um, in our search for a Tongan word for art. 
in Tofunga, as I mentioned before, this is part one, Tofunga one, Matiro Arts one. But um, we're going to continue on. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it back to Lusanda if she wants to say something before we continue on to the... Um, well, I guess it's just, it's good to have, point part, yeah. have an idea of what fata means and to carry, you know, fata to carry and, and it's also... Um, a noun in the way that it's the square on top of maybe the royal tombs on the top of a canoe mm. um, or the or the top the layer beams, of a, yeah. beams mm. of a of a torn phallic. So yeah. there we go. I think we have a, an idea, yeah. a little idea. A little idea. And it will come as we go. Yes. Yeah. So Continue. I guess we can go now to your PowerPoint mm. and let's have a look and okay. have a discussion about what that is. Okay. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll go to the PowerPoint and mm. here we are. Uh, again, our topic there is Fata, the essence of Tongan arts, Metu Faiwa, Tufunga. What I would like us, Luciane, I would like us to start with... Uh, with uh, so what is your idea of showing up all these, uh, I guess it's, it's Polynesia, it's um, Pacific Islands, it's you know, or Australasia or New Zealand's also there. So what are you saying? Yeah, what I'm saying, Lusanne, is uh, this is the beginning. Fata is or was an old concept and it started when we started to build our society in Tonga or the societies of the islands. Eh? And uh, it's something to do with, with uh, it, it relates to migration. That's why I showed the areas. Um, earlier in the earliest migration. So are you saying the, that this is a shared concept throughout Micronesia, Melanesia and Polynesia? It and can Australasia? be. It, is that it, what you're saying, that Fata was um, used by all these people? In, in, in certain cases, Fata was used by all of them, okay. like in the, build, in, the, in the house, like of carrying a high chief, Eh? So it's there. It was there in some of these places okay. or all of them. And it can, Fata can be also a universal uh, concept, Lucian. Eh? Mm. So we'll continue on. Yes, please. Um, but this is to do with the uh, pottery, the clay pottery of the Lapita migration, how we were settled. So we'll continue on. Um, This is okay, it's just uh, the title, but we'll go on from there to, uh, I have, yeah, with, with, with material arts, Luciane, I have uh, um, classified it into six um, ages. In the case of Tom, I'm talking here um, in the case of Tom, and I'll be related to Moana in general eh? mm. and worldwide, but this is, this is a new classification of uh, the ages of material arts, is my um, first contribution to this topic. And uh, ages of material arts, mea tu ufaiwa in Tonga. So the, the first age, what I call age of canoe and hunuki hat. Eh? Uh, but I'll explain hunuki later, but it's roughly from 8,000 BC or prior to 2000 BC. Eh? Uh, so that's why I, I showed the map before because as I go through it will relate to to the uh, to the early settlement of the Pacific. Eh? And it's so, quite, as you can see, everyone can see that it's quite self-explanatory. You, mm -hmm. You've got it there quite clearly. Um, you know, the ages and the years, which is, which is great. Yeah, roughly, um, yeah. So if we can go through I'll go through the and then you can... Uh, yeah, the Hunuki see. hut, mm. if you were going to say, can you um, give us an idea? I I know I sat in on a seminar about the Hunuki hut, you know, with, from what I remember, people will arrive and, you know, mm. quickly put up a hut. Yeah, yeah, this is Hunuki hut. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is how... It, it and looks it, like a yeah. triangle being just... Um, yeah. pierced into the ground it just try yes. yeah it's quick yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah triangle that, yes. like this one that's yes. a, 
But we'll go it's back okay. again because we will come and talk more about this eh? uh, in my in, in how I look at it. Eh? So, uh, so uh, if we have time, yeah. So yeah. age of uh, clay. The, the second age, age mm -hmm. of clay pottery mm -hmm. or lapita. Mm -hmm. It's roughly from two thousand BC until uh, one AD or mm -hmm. zero, but uh, normally they say one AD, eh? uh, the year of Christ. Eh? So, so this is how I classify. Um, number three, age of mount, eh? age mm -hmm. of seer. Uh, that's what I be. That's when I, you know, I believe we started to build uh, seer mount for building houses and so forth. Eh? But boom, boom. number four, age of stone masonry, uh, roughly. So, so age of mount goes from uh, uh, one AD to one thousand eighty. Eh, or to the 11th century. And uh, there are a lot of evidence, uh, Luciane, that can um, add in the, and, and can relate to, to all these claims of mine. Eh? So number four is age of stone masonry. So from roughly 1000 or 11th century until 17th century. Eh? And age, uh, and number five, age of iron metal, when European arrived until 1970. Um, in this um, division, and then the number six, age of information and technology from 1970 until now. Eh? Well, I guess you can say that age of iron and metal is still ongoing. Certainly. So yeah. it'll be 1700 AD to ongoing, just like age of um, information technology, 1970s, and still ongoing, as we know. Yeah, yeah, mm. it's it's still yeah, okay. yeah, but All with right. the uh, emphasis of the day. So, okay, mm. do you, uh, do you have any question? Or we no, continue? I think I think it's it's mm. quite yes, mm. yes. So this is H one. Um, I mean number one, age of canoe and hunuki hut. As I um, show you, you know the hunuki hut. Uh, hunuki is just is is a Tongan word when you just um, um, hook. Po eh? Poke something, yeah, into poke something the ground. on That's what yes. we call hunuki. Mm -hmm. And they put on two, you know, two coconuts. One coconut from the one coconut. Four, uh, one coconut leaves from this side. One coconut mm -hmm. leaves. Yes. Or, and a few sticks. Makes as, a, you, as you have shown, yeah, eh? a very as small, have shown, yeah? Yeah. very portable mm -hmm. hut. Mm -hmm. But this is what I believe that we are very strong in the, in those days between eight thousand BC to two thousand BC. Um, canoe. And Hunuki hut construction were very strong, and people experienced different way of building them, and the you kind know, of the canoe and the Hunuki hut. And uh, this is a time of settlement, mainly in Pulotu. What I refer to Pulotu is Viti or Fiji and Melanesia. And uh, I believe there were material fine arts, you know, drawing and geometric patterns already developed. There are uh, evidence for that as well, but I won't worldwide go too. Yes, yes. And, and worldwide. Forever. And then uh, mm -hmm. I do believe performing arts, chanting, dances, percussions in different ways were already developed. Yes, but that's 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 uh, that's the the first age. I think I remembered someone mm -hmm. saying, once human beings arrive on this earth, they start humming yes. and singing. Yes. So mm -hmm. wherever they that. are, they yeah. have some form of chanting or yeah. singing or humming. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, next yeah. one. So next one we go to to uh, age of clay pottery uh, around you no, know, but nothing much, uh, n not much difference from from this age to the previous one. Uh, as I as it shows you know as it shown shows there material fine arts of clay pottery, um, you know was developed. Plotu and Moana. Moana for me is the expansion, the, the concept of Mahama, Lolofonua, Earth, Lolofonua, Underworld, and Langi Sky were developed uh, together with Plotu. Um, you know, and, and Moana with Mahama, Lolofonua, and Langi, um, for me, um, they were the expansions of us, you know, of the new. Um, new migrants, you know, the, the Lapita people or the Moana people, which uh, originally Tongans and Samoans. But Pulotu, as I mentioned in number one, is about 
um, Fiji. Fiji and yes. Melanesia. Yeah. Material fine arts drawing and geometric patterns was continue to develop and performing arts the same thing. Eh? So this the yeah. age this what I believe was happening during the age of clay poetry. Eh? Uh, do you have any question? No, I think as, as I said, I think the art of drawing, mm. as we've known from other civilizations, it started, people just started drawing it yeah. for, you know, wherever it started. started. So mm. I guess whoever arrived, if it is the Lapita people who arrived in Tonga, they already had their arts and drawings mm. and pottery anyway. They just brought it with them, you mm. know. So yeah. um, performing arts, I believe, starts from mm. way back when. Yeah. But that's good. So, yeah, what are so we? number three now, age of mound constructions, when they started to build mound and to build house on the top of mounds, which I, as I said before, yes, it's yes. around 180 to 1000 AD. Yeah? And, and these points, the same points that I mentioned before. So what gave you the, the uh, idea that these started then? Is it because of um, archaeological findings that... Certainly. ...that aged... They put an age to the mound, yeah, the, the seer? The, the age of mound construction. Yeah, it's from archaeological, mm, mm. anthropological, and also from oral traditions. Eh? Uh, and, and, and it shows in our myths and traditions um, concepts like seer and, and some other related concepts that were developed from uh, happening around these times, eh? like apasia. Eh? Mokosia, Fuesia, eh? uh, it shows from our archaeological findings with Dr. Spenament, um, most of the oldest settlement, they were Sia. Always there are mounds, there are Sia around in, in those areas that we, I mean, talking about the case of Tonga here in particular. Eh? And then the next one, number four, Age it's of Stone, stone Masonries, mm. which I, I believe to be, and, and this goes uh, with simultaneously empire. with our with the Empire. Mm. You know, there's mm. a new thing there coming up here. Where's the Empire? Did I mention it? Uh, anyway, it started around this, uh, in, I, I will talk about it later, but uh, uh, it, because I will come back to this age and talk about them in details, eh? Um, I'm not sure... So you've I'm got in there, in all the, in all your points, or your ages, the list, yeah. you've got material, you've got those three things, or four things, actually, in all of those, so I guess they were just ongoing. Yeah, and, and, and here, material fine arts, uh, house and double hal canoe, eh? which I believe that also developed during this time together with this, yeah? because this is the time the Tongan uh, Empire was founded and, mm -hmm. and started to expand. Mm -hmm. More new houses like the Fare from Manuka and Fare uh, Frafisi from Fiji and Samoa um, appeared in the scene. And uh, also the Kalia was, was world um, constructed and developed around this time of the age of stone masonry, yeah? and and when we talk about our, our prehistory, uh, most of the story about stone constructions happened around or between uh, one thousand and seven thousand, yeah? seventeen thousand. Yeah? Mm. We continue. Yes, please. Yeah. So, and okay, number five, age of iron metal. Mm. That, I guess um, that's the intervention happened. Yeah, right? and, and uh, yes, you know, from was, um, mm, yes, yes, was marked strongly mm. or mostly mm. by the age of iron metal. Don't you think that with with the earlier um, explorers that came from Spain and France and those people, which was way before seventeen hundred, I think the thirteenth century, fourteenth. 15th century, don't you think that they would have introduced iron and metal then when they visited the islands? Like some of those early explorers came in the 15th 
1600s. Yes, yeah, 16. That's the the the, the uh, I know, the seven thousand. Because there's some the Spanish and you know like um, yeah in the 16th. They came yeah, yeah, earlier yeah, and yeah. they would have brought there. Yeah. You know they yeah. would have introduced iron. Of course, and yeah, yeah. Because I started in the 17th century, but you you mm. were you were right. Yeah. yeah. But what what I put here, Lucy. Is is the uh, the time or the period of time that mostly that something is mostly well known and concentrated? Yeah? Because the, until the 17th century, that's when we started to to use and talk more and more of the metal uh, materials we are introducing to Tonga. Of course, there were some in the in the 1600 and so forth when. When some of the absolutely uh, yeah. that was when mm. it was introduced. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I'm talking. But what my mind. I guess it doesn't well, really matter how much they used it, but it mm. was then introduced. Yeah. You know, but, earlier on. Yeah, because it, it can like all like all the ages like this one, uh, it's a it's a it's a rough period of time where I believe that mostly uh, that particular things was so obvious. Yeah. Okay, but you were right, yeah. Mm. Uh, so the next one? We'll continue on, mm. okay. Um. Which we've talked about this already, how, what fata is to carry. Uh. Okay, what is fata? Um, to carry, to revere, to these are... Um, additional meetings that uh, a meeting I want I, I would like to add into to what is fata in in the sense that we explained I explained before eh? so to carry to revere to protect safeguard to lead uh, also is a center of things eh? and and as we go um, I can explain that more and in future public lectures on material arts and also a world view to life. Eh? Um, Lucy, do you want to ask any questions uh, here? No, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it's okay, eh? Yes, mm. yes. Okay, okay. Mm. So we'll, we'll continue on. Here is the, we've seen, we've seen yeah, this here also. Is the humu, mm. uh, fata, fariki, humu, floor, floor, fata. This is what I call fata, fariki, or humu. Humu is the is the words was common uh, in various things in Tonga, especially in arts, and humu is triangle. Eh? So fata, this is uh, as in this case of, of farehunuki, this is farehunuki. Um, we don't have fata here. Eh? Where is the fata here? There is no fata here. Because of the nature of the farehunuki, the fata is where the person sits on. That's, there's nothing there. Mm, yeah, it's the floor. That's why I call fata floor, uh, floor fata. Eh? For me, the concept of fata to carry, there's nothing there to carry. There's nothing there sit on a square because of the nature of the fale hunuki. What, it's, what happens there, people or the person here, as I put here, sit on the floor. So for me, fata is the floor which forms the humu, the triangle. Even though there's no flooring, as we can see. Mm. It's just sitting on the grass. Oh, 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 so mat. there isn't flooring in there. Here, here, here in this case, you can see here. Mm. Uh, yeah. You no, know, this one is, uh, is, is, is the grass, but mm. the idea is there is a mat there like this one here. Yeah, there's something there for them. There's a mat or whatever, a uh, tapa for them to sit on. And that thing is the fata. In this sense, in this um, case of the of the fare unuki, yeah. There was 
Uh, no. Now that is fata, hey? That is a big group of people. So as we go from there to here, this is, one can say that this is one of the original meaning of fata, eh? Fata tangata, eh? People carry, this is with great respect, this is to bow the fifth, um, when these are the kaufata, the tangata, the kawala, the kaufata, different names. These are um, the men who carried who him. Who carried him uh, to Malaikola, to mm. uh, the Royal Cemetery. Mm. Eh? Mm. But uh, just to give you, this is the potek at the post. Uh, this can go up and build like a house. Eh? Well, that is the covering of that. that yeah. That's the central covering of that, mm. which is four posts yeah, called the port decke. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. has a roof yeah. on top. Yeah. But, so, mm. but, which is called the ato in Taolunga, the top. Yeah, yeah. The that's how they build from mm. the fata. Whatever, mm. eh, fata the, 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 in this case, the, the corpus of the king, or fata any, you know, um, any living persons. But the whole idea that we have here, human male fata, eh, in the potangata, human post, eh, a male post or whatever you call it, eh, fata tangata, carry. But this is the whole concept here. Human carriers. Mm. Human carriers, yeah. Oh. We also have uh, ribs here in, in our case is fata. Eh? We call it fata. The ribs of whatever, human. Fata, fata. And we, that's how we call it fata, fata. Eh? But fata there can go to the meaning. As, as we go through, we can see that it fits in with some of these meanings. To carry, to revere, fata, to protect, safeguard, like in this case. In here is to protect and safeguard the body of the king, the corpus. Eh? In here we have fata to protect. Eh? It fits in with the senses that I have shown about. And here again is the fata. And um, normally a, a, a matapuri is sitting here, but uh, it's the same uh, funeral, royal funeral. So we have here um, the seer. This is the seer, uh, Lucy. And we have the Fata Faliki. There's someone sitting here on the Falehunuki. I just um, created this just to reflect this, you know, this um, um, This is Sia, and there are thousands of Sia throughout Tonga, everywhere. So what, what is the, um, why is the, there a Falik, uh, a house there? It, what's, what's your... Why have you put a house, uh, not a house, a falehunuki there at the sea? Because it... Yeah, it's just to give the idea of how they build a, ha a, a, a fale or a, a, a tongan hut on the top of sea. Not falehunuki only. They develop it to fale for manuka. And, but this is just to show how a house can be built on the top of mm -hmm. the sea. Yeah. And some of those seers were left with nothing on top, which we may also it may also suggest that that seer was a burial ground, eh? yeah, because nothing was on it. Yeah, there are different kinds of seers. Mm. That's right. There are burial. There are seer for for chiefly games like the heulupe. Eh? Mm. Yes. But, um, yeah. Um, and uh, but. I, I just mm -hmm. put it there to show this is how the seer look if you settle on the top, eh? or uh, or in the case of settlement. Eh? Mm -hmm. But as you said correctly, said there are different kind of seer, you know, for for different purposes. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I call this fata faliki uh, and fata po. Eh? Uh, it can be it can be peeled here. Eh? We have the fata faliki uh, as in the case of Farehunuki or Farehunuki here, and we have the Fatapo, eh? Fatapo like this one, and 
Saka tangata. But we will we, we continue on. Eh? This is the Hamonga, the Hamonga Maui Motua Triton. Um, this is Father Po, Po's Father, Father Faliki. Mm -hmm. Just to give, Father is, is yeah, can be on the floor if there is no post, and Father can be on the top. That's how I look at it. Eh? And, and well, I guess what I'm looking at is the, the explanation you've given us about Fata meaning to carry, to support, to, you know, whatever. The floor bit, I, I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm still confused as to why a flooring would be called Fata Faliki. I can understand the other Fata, eh? that's the post and the mm. top bit, mm. um, because they're holding, mm. carrying mm. Eh? Um, something. But there's there's just a floor in the on the on the faliki on the ground. There's I can't see what um, why a f that would be called a fata too. Mm. So can you tell me why you decided to say that there's such a thing as fata faliki? Yeah, because one sense of 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 fata that I try to explain that. It's a, a seating place eh? where someone can be protected because like the Falehunuki here, there is no fata there in the, in the, in the form of the house. Eh? And, and the fata here, because with, with this Falehunuki, we form the humu, the concept of triangle or in Tongan is called humu. Eh? It can fit in with the falehunuki, the structure of it. Humu, the concept of humu that forms a part of the fata. Triangle, triangle, as I will explain later, form a uh, fata, form square, eh? uh, mathematically speaking. Eh? And that's why I, 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 I claim that fata here, it's just the floor eh, that protect, that carry the person who ever is inside the okay. falehunuki. Eh? Thank you. And, and as it goes here, Lucy, you can go from here to up here and it, we, we can apply the same idea. Eh? That's very obvious being on mm. top mm. that you would be there, that that's you the thing fatter you know mm. you're being you're being carried up there that's mm. yeah that's highly obvious to me okay so that's that fatter and there we, we have the kalia we have the kalia with the fatter that's also. the same concept of yeah. fatter here the, yes. they they are on the top here mm. uh, over there mm. i call it uh yeah, what's where's the name I put there? It's not there. Anyway, um, Fata Toka or Fata Faliki, because there is no post. Uh, the, 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 the Kalia here is just on the how on the hammer. Eh? Uh, the Kalia is on the top of the two house. Eh? Um, so uh, mm, it's more like clear. it's more like the, the Fata Faliki here. Or on the top there. Yeah? It's very clear on the Kalia. Yeah, it's very clear. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Eh? Uh, that I'm trying to explain, but uh, but I think it will show us as we continue. Uh, Thank you. Here. Eh? So in here, the Faliki here, this is Fatapo. Hmm. But uh, the people here, they it's are... It's a very clear Fata too. Yeah, you can see... Yeah. Yeah. See it all. Yeah, mm. yeah. So he's on the top there, you know, that guy there I put there, I put him there. And this is the fata here and the four post. Yeah? And and in my concept of fata faliki, they are on fata as well, you know. But this is a very clear, eh? This is much clear, right? Eh? 
Okay, this is Fata Toka, it's the Royal um, It's the Royal um, Tomb, Salangi. Mm, there are certain pictures that, that really show from the top, looking yeah. down, eh? and, and, and you, you can see the clarity yeah, of the, the clarity. Eh? Mm. And, and, and this is what I meant. When we go back to here, and we come to here, it's the city. Eh? And with this case, you, you, you have the triangle here, the humu here. Humu is called in Tongan triangle or tapator. Eh? So when we come to Farihunuki, you have the same form. Eh? And when you come to here, so why we don't have a pyramid? We, we only have step pyramid. Eh? We, we don't have, if, if we included this part here, the triangle, the humu, we will have pyramid. But, we, but in our langi, in our royal um, tombs, there is no pyramid. Mm. It's only step pyramid. Eh? For me, why we didn't have step pyramid? It seems to me that the Tuitonga mm. make up the pyramid. That's how our langi looks like when if we visualize the Tuitonga sitting on the top. And that's where they live or they that's where they live, that's where they are buried on the top there. So they are the one that make up the pyramid out from the step pyramid because we only have step pyramid simply means there is no complete pyramid. Eh? And for me this is how the Tuitonga recite and see is it was seated. He was the one that form up by using this concept, this idea of humu, form up the whole of the fata to make up for a pyramid. Yeah. Okay, this is Fata geometric pattern or kupesu. We can some parts of the Fata here are shown and seen here on the Kuraumea on the Lapita pottery. We have the Fata here, Fata of the Tuitonga, the royal stones. Here is the the um, abstract um, drawing in a geometrical uh, form of the Fata here. Symbols for the Tuitonga. And with the Tuitonga, Fata is at the end the symbol of the Tuitonga. Fata and Homo, Fata and Homo always go together as symbol of the Tuitonga. We have Fata here, Fata la lava, Kupesi. We have Fata here again on Kula Umea, different kinds of Kula Umea of Labita pottery. So uh, we come to the Hamong again with more details. We have here the Fata Faliki, as I um, refer to. And you know, when I talk about the Humu, two Humu here form a Fata. And Humu and Fata are very important in Tongan House and in the Hamonga and in the Alangi, the royal tombs. Eh? You always find the concept of Humu there and Fata going together all the time. Eh? So I just put it here to to reflect the uh, to portray and reflect the idea of of uh, how we have one Humu, another Humu, eh, together, and we have the Fata Faliki. Eh? So we have the Humu here. This is the Humu here, which um, which. Um, his late majesty, King Tupo the Fourth, um, 
mention or claim that uh, the Hamonga was a, uh, um, the, the, the top part here was uh, like a clock that shows a sundial. You, uh, yeah? Mm. A sundial. Yeah, yeah, the humu. Wasila a. The doloa, eh? Mm. And, uh, we'll, you know, I'll, I'll just put, because mm. humu and doloa goes together in our myths mm. and also in the, in our constellations. And they are here, but I will talk about it in some other. Wasila a, they are fata po, um, fata, po, fata, fata, eh? This is the stone age in the, in um, Britain. Uh, without cross leg join, eh? uh, I forgot to mention that only our Hamonga worldwide that have this. Look at this cross leg join there. There is no yes. only us, mm. and it's very unique worldwide. As I um, look around. Uh, with Triwifon, just three slabs putting together, only us we have um, the, um, the cross leg joint, eh? which is so unique. And we developed that from our Kalia, how we built our Kalia and our, our house. So the same idea of, of, uh, of uh, that we use the cross leg joint in our Hamonga. As we come to the Stonehenge, no cross leg joint eh? without and here we have different kind of uh, of pyramid uh, with all fata here so essential so fundamental fata here the fata concept here in their own terms they all all of these civilization ancient events they had the same kupesi fata kupesi in their own ways like in our case so it's a sign for me of all civilization that they that was civilization that was well developed and ended up building or or part of building pyramids was part of their work and it was shown in our case as well right i think you see that's uh that's the uh, the end of, of this presentation. I'll, I'll leave it for you if you would like to do uh, ask um, some more questions. Well, I think they're all pretty self-explanatory and the FATA concept um, was just not unique to us. It was a worldwide concept, mm -hmm. you know, and it's amazing because it was done by the, by the big civilizations and we are part of that because we, we you know we had that too so it 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 um it just goes to show how developed our culture was mm. and our well, knowledge yeah. was you know because we even though we didn't travel to egypt in you know the year 1000 or you know travel to india or wherever mm. but we were still doing the same thing um in our little island, you know, mm. or in our islands, mm. you know, which tells me that a lot of a lot of the stuff, and I guess a lot of the learned ones mm. have discussions now about how a lot of knowledge is shared by different cultures, mm. well, the same knowledge, you know, mm. and same stories and same um, myths and legends are shared worldwide, mm. you know, with other cultures, but you know, lots of people have different explanations. But I think that's a very, um, that's a, a fabulous show of fata and the uniqueness of our patterns and how it's being transferred mm -hmm. to the canoe, to the kalia, to our faletonga, you know, to our tapa, cloth ngatu designs, you know, and it shows up in all things like our um, ancient tombs ancient royal tombs you know this fata concept is just all the way through our arts material arts and buildings and stone masonry so yes i i don't have any more to add to you unless you have something else you want to I finish think, off this program with yeah um again lucy i think that's what i i have decided and i to share uh, in this uh, particular interview with you or 
uh, or in the in the public lecture in in its English language, is a uh, it's a work that I have uh, developed, and uh, I would like to to share you know um, some of the concepts here and some of the of the views that I believe that you know that are required to to add into the to some of the topics that evolve around here, uh, both in the Tongan language and also in the English. Eh? Uh, but Malo Albito, I'll give it back to you. I think that's all um, that I would like to share in this case. Eh? Thank you everyone for spending the time in this discussion and it's always um, I guess encouraged that if anyone has comments other ideas please put them through on our Facebook page thank you for listening to us today have a wonderful weekend and until the next lecture thank you Malo Malo Abito Kamo Mea